Welcome everybody, this is an introductional video for your fence training. I'm going to do two of these videos, one with a partner, and this video is for those of you that don't have a partner to practice on. You can practice this on a bob or on a bag, it's absolutely fine, okay? I just want you guys to get used to what the fence is and getting used to being in this range, okay? For those of you that don't know what the fence is, it is simply this or this, okay? Very unassuming, very non-threatening, I'm just simply controlling this gap for a few seconds before I can decide what to do, all right? All this is doing is buying you just those few seconds in what we might call pre-fight, because I've seen it and it's happened to me, this distance is lost so quickly in real situations. And it's often just because we're not prepared for them. You know, you could be standing there one minute and next thing you know, guys in your face. As I said, that has happened to me. So. This, I just want you to get used to putting on if suddenly someone comes into your range. Stay back, stay where you are, okay? So the reason this is really, really important is it just gives you the control you need before you decide what to do. And if you don't practice being in this range before you start striking, then trust me, you'll naturally create that gap. And that's not a very good preemptive strike, especially if he knows what he's doing, because you'll see that coming. We want to be able to control this range and then learn to strike from this range. Yeah? You need to drop body weight on someone without a warm up. That's what we're looking for. But before you start doing that, you need to get used to being here. Okay? So for training purposes, Get used to doing this and walk around your bag. And every now and then, you know, talk with your hands a bit, stay back, stay where you are. And every now and then, pretend he's coming forward and lock him off. Stay back, stay there. Okay, I know it looks a bit mental, but this is really, really good training for you to be assertive. If you ever see the police, they use a very similar kind of fence to tell people to stay back. But it's not aggressive. It's non-threatening, it's just assertive. Stay there, stay back, stay where you are, okay? I just want you guys to get used to doing this because it might feel quite unnatural and alien to a lot of you to do that, all right? So every now and then, walk round and just lock it off. And what I'm doing there is using the palm of my hand to his chest. But I don't want you to pick up any bad habits. Do not hold it there, because if you hold it there, Obviously in a real situation, he would grab your arm. All right, and I don't want you to do this either. Make sure you do not touch him. The only time I want you to touch the bag is for your way of sort of monitoring the intention to strike or shove. So this range finder, it's like a little antenna, is for you. It's do not get used to holding him. And I'll tell you why. If you hold him, a, you'll be grabbed, and B, he won't like it because he will know that you are controlling him, okay? Doing this, he doesn't know that you're controlling him. Deep down, somewhere in there, he'll know that you are, but consciously, he won't know that you're controlling him, okay? So that's what we want, is this to be very unassuming and very natural. So it needs to kind of flow, and you need to be relaxed with it. And as I said, a good part of the training, every now and then, lock him off. Stay back, stay where you are. Stay there then, all right? Don't hold your hand, don't touch him, don't hold it. Just get used to having your hands here because having them here blocks off his main attacking tools, which would be his arms. And obviously the shove holds him back if he comes back with his head, okay? I know it looks a little bit weird and it almost looks almost too simple. But as I said to you before, I've seen this gap loss so quickly and we don't want to be here. All right, you've probably seen, you know, guys in the street doing this, all this. I really recommend that you don't do that. Obviously, I'm not telling any of you what to do. It's just I would keep my hands here or here, okay? Because we're going to be learning to strike from here if we have to. If you have got one of these bobs, it's a, it gives you a little bit more of an advantage because you can learn, as soon as he comes into my range, if this is his centre line, yeah, I'm going to slightly step off his centre line. 
to try and talk the situation down. Can't we just talk about this? And as soon as I've done that, as you'll see in the preemptive strike videos, I've lined him up, either with a hook or a cross from here. Hush! Yeah? Hush! Obviously we do that later, but for you starting out, once you're kind of used to being in these, these range, imagine drawing a center line on your bag. As I said, if you've got one of these even better, and then just perhaps throw some, don't go for power yet, go for accuracy, okay? Because honestly, trust me, if you don't get used to being here first, if any of you have done any sort of martial arts or boxing before, you will create this gap from your natural position. And we don't want to do that for our preemptive strike. So practice being here, talk with your hands, stay back, stay where you are. You could also practice shoving the bag, okay? And again, if you're gonna go with a shove, use both hands and almost push in a downwards position to his chest, but it needs to be really, really firm. So you need to be planted into the ground from how you'd naturally stand conversation range because the, the shove needs to be shocking too. Again, you don't want to get into position to to shove or get into position to, to punch. You know, I'm, as I said, I'm not teaching you guys how to be fighters. I'm just teaching you how to throw one ferocious shot so that you can, you can escape afterwards, okay? So get used to being here. Try to sink into the ground and talk how you'd naturally talk, staying off the center line, keeping your hands up, and just getting used to it. What I recommend you do, okay, depending on on the type of person you are. If you are gonna train a shove, put it on big enough to create a gap to run away, okay? Because you could shove him and then perhaps start being verbal with him. As you see on the website, I've written about a verbal fence. You could go really aggressive from here and start threatening him and perhaps ballooning and posturing for him to not come any closer. Don't come any closer, you know, getting all aggressive. The downside with doing that is if you're not convincing enough and you're not a fighter, yeah, you've lost your preemptive strike, okay? So you need to kind of figure out, you know, what type of person you are and you need to make sure if you do practice the shove that you can back it up because if, as I say, if he's not convinced, you'll now be fighting from this range. And obviously if we're practicing our preemptive strike, then we've lost that when we've done that. So if you're working more on my submissive fence, which is what I recommend for you non-fighters, then work with that and obviously just use this to keep him back. Stay back, stay where you are, stay back. Okay, then we can learn to strike. The only disadvantage with the submissive fence, if you go submissive with you know, somebody, I very much doubt if you start saying, look, I don't want any trouble, um, that he's gonna go, okay then, sorry I bothered you. So what I mean by that is that you're probably gonna have to hit him or shove him back really, really far so that you can run away. Because if you're not able to back it up, you don't wanna be, shoving him back and then threatening him and if he doesn't buy it you've lost your strike so does that make sense you either need to shove him and run or you need to hit him because and again i know like you might think oh you know that i'm hitting perhaps too early but trust me if the guys if you can't talk a situation down from this range and he's intent on closing this gap trust me his intentions are bad he's going to hurt you you know, if he touches this fence twice, you need to do something because his intentions are bad, trust me. So learn to strike from this range or learn to shove really, really hard from this range. But you must, must get used to being here first. Okay, so as much as you can on your bag, on your bob, or you know, even if you haven't got a partner to train with, you can just practice being in this range with people, you know, your workmates or, you know, your partner at home, just practice being here when you're talking to them at home. Step off their center line 
And you can have a bit of fun with this. You know, look at the targets. Obviously, don't you know hit your friends and family, but you can look at the targets. And obviously, when you get good at it, they won't even know you're doing it. And that means you're getting good at it. Okay, so recap. Submissive fence. Again, that says to anyone, doesn't it? I don't want any trouble. Exclamation fence. They'd be my two recommended fences. But personalise them. Make them your own. And keep this bent arm distance from your opponent or your bag or whoever you're training with. Always keep this distance. Pretend they're coming in, lock it off. Stay back, stay where you are, okay? Don't hold it there, remember? Stay back, stay where you are. Keep your hands here. As I said, we don't wanna be doing any of this or this, okay? I really wouldn't recommend you do that. I know I said to you in another video that you probably won't block from here, and you probably won't, but you've got a much better chance blocking from here than you have from all this Sort of, sort of street speak stuff. I would recommend you keep your hands here, keep working with them, keep talking. And you know, get used to talking to your bag, you know, if you haven't got a partner. Be assertive, stay there, stay back, stay where you are. You know, find your voice, be assertive with it. Because in a real situation, you might have to, you know? And if you're quite a timid person and quite quiet, you might think you can do that, but you'll probably want the ground to swallow you up. So get used to being here, guys, before you start looking at the preemptive strike. And once you are used to being here, you know, get used to targeting before you start looking at power. I'll go into it more on the, on the preemptive strike video. This, this is so, so important, trust me, more than anything on the site. This is controlling the pre-fight. You know, as I said, loads of people are looking at how to be a good fighter. Sometimes controlling this can have, you know, the deciding factor on the outcome. If you can control this range, you might be able to talk it down or you might be able to end it before it starts. Okay, so honestly, I, I keep saying this is far more important than any of the physical stuff. But you've got to know when to put it on and you've got to be aware. You know, without awareness, this is useless. Okay, and again, as I said, even if I did see someone, you know, being aggressive at a bar or in a restaurant, just because I know this and know how to, you know, strike from here doesn't mean I want to do it. I'd probably sooner leave, leave the establishment. You know, self-defense isn't about knocking people out and, and, and being aggressive. It's about avoidance. As I said, that's the last thing I want to, I don't want to be here. You know, as much as we're practicing this, and as much as I don't do martial arts anymore, my ethics are still the same. I practice all of this so that I don't have to do it. And I hope you guys, you know, have the same view on that. All right, so practice this as much as possible. Get used to being here. Stay back, stay where you are. Get your fence right, make it your own, all right? And enjoy it, enjoy your training. I'll do another video with a partner because I do recommend this is much better trained with a partner but there's nothing stopping you not practicing it if you don't have one. Use a bag, you know, or just, as I said, practice it with your, your friends or family. You know, just honestly make it part of you and so that it's instinct. If someone suddenly comes into your range, whoa, stay there, stay back. That's what we're looking for, okay? And that's what I want you to get good at. Thank you for watching.